Hello there, children. Guess who it is? It's Papa Gundam. That's what some people call me. I really wish women would call me that. It's a lot of dudes calling me Daddy Gundam and stuff like that. You know, I didn't really ask for that. I, like, wanted really attractive women to call me that. But you know what? You got to take what you can get, right? Now, that's the price of fame. It's the cost of doing business, a drag queen once told me. But anyway, it's time to watch something that I was made privy of that I purposefully ignored because I knew it would bother me. So let's watch it in real time together, shall we? It's another piece from that great website. Uh, that great... That's all, folks. It's another great clip from that wonderful YouTube channel you don't give a shit about. Game Slice. They have 135,000 subscribers and scarcely get over 10,000 views on anything. Unless... It's E3 related or something. Yesterday was a very big day, and one of the major reasons was because of- And of course, it's everybody's favorite scrub lord, Jeff Keighley. You might remember Jeff Keighley as that announcer from the Game Awards. Hold on. <laughs> That's how I feel about the Game Awards. Much like I feel about the MTV Awards. Whole lot of flash, whole lot of bullshit, and none of it fucking matters. I thought you weren't gonna curse anymore, Gundam. You are turning over a new leaf. I was trying, it didn't go well. Give me another chance. Please, YouTube, don't punish me. Anyway, you might have remembered Jeff Keighley giving like the Lifetime Achievement Award to Hideo Kojima and then weeping <laughs> as he passed this man in an award. Of course, I am talking about Hideo Kojima, the creator of Metal Gear Solid and tonight's industry icon. of the most principled, loyal, and ethical men I have ever met. And I'm just so honored to call you a friend above everything else, Hideo. Yeah. Now, this trophy right here, I gotta tell you about this because- One eternity later. Him and his producer, Ken, and it's like, like, I can't get this to him. I first offered to ship it to him, but I couldn't get the address of his new studio. I wonder why. If Hideo Kojima was a Jedi, he'd lose himself in the fucking force. So anyway, Jeff Keighley is now interviewing ba -ba 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 God Howard. You know, the guy who sits there and tells you things are in every Fallout or Skyrim game, but they're not really there. Or they're kind of there, but in a really crappy state. Or it just works, but it really doesn't. It's like the ultimate meme. <sighs> Let's watch this crap as I lose my shit. Bethesda's press conference, and uh, we're going to start things off with a man who dropped the mic picked it up and dropped it a couple more times yesterday. If Todd Howard picked up the mic and dropped it, then picked it up and dropped it again, it's because the size of the mic was just too big for poor little Todd Howard. Is that a short joke? And by the way, the Bethesda press conference, cancer on a stick, my God. The press conference was summed up by Andrew WK's music. You're just sitting there like, what the fuck is this? Hey, uh, Todd Howard from Bethesda Game Studio. Great to Todd, see you again, Jeff. It's great to see you, Todd. Uh, I gotta say, we, we knew that you were probably gonna be on stage yesterday talking Fallout 76, but you just kind of decided to up the ante with like a lot, a lot more, one more things. I already knew he was gonna announce those games. Do I get to be the next Michael Pactor? Except all my predictions come true. Hope they don't shit on you, Bubba. Shit on who? Shit on. Whoops, wrong button. Uh, was that always the plan to just kind of say like, here's everything we're doing? I don't know that it was always the plan. We kind of got there. We're doing so many things. Yeah. And traditionally we would say, let's just, let's focus on this. But um, our fans kind of, you know, they find a lot of things we're doing and they want to know. And so we just talked about it like, let's just be upfront and say, here's what we're doing. Cause we're excited about it. Yeah. And we think, you know, all of our fans are as well. So it was. Here's the thing. He says this, like be upfront about it, but he didn't, spill all the beans about Fallout 76. He waited for interviews because let's face it, nobody's really gonna watch these interviews. The Bethesda press conference was seen by millions of people since it was shown at E3, but this interview with him and Jeff Keighley only has 143,000 views, which means only 143,000 people have some semblance of an idea of what the fuck is up, unless some YouTube douchebag like me takes clips of it, puts it up and then goes, look what they're doing. They're lying to us again. 
let's just get it all out there and, and let everybody know what we're doing. Yeah, well, because I remember it was a couple years ago on this show where you sort of talked about, you know, your longer term philosophy for the studio and that, you know, you were going to do the Elder Scrolls Six after this other mystery game that was sort of in between. So I guess we now know what that mystery game is. Yes, it's Starfield, okay. um, which is incredible. I just noticed Jeff Keighley is wearing custom Nikes that have PlayStation logos on the bottom. You know, the X, triangle, circle, square. Whoa. Jesus Christ, man. I was I was so distracted by his shoes. I was like, where the fuck you get those? I've never seen these before. That I didn't even pay attention to what hot... To, 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 to fuck my brain. I just had this great screen cap of Todd Howard. And I just couldn't, I can't focus. Which is incredibly exciting for us. We've been working on it for no. for a long time. Yeah. Could be and, a douchebag. Um, you know, it's one of those things where even though we're announcing it, there'll be a time, obviously, where we really show it off and dig yeah. deep, and uh, that'll be closer to its release. Right, because that's the thing is you announced them, but he said it really was just a logo resolve, and there's not a lot. You said it was, uh, I think, it was a next-generation single-player experience is what you're saying about yes. it, Yes, right? yes. Does that mean it's single player only? It won't have online? Like you're focusing that on just a single player experience? It's 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 focus is single player. Whether okay. it has some social connection, I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't right. I don't want to guess right now. What do you mean you don't know and you don't want to guess? Does Todd Howard even know what the hell he's promoting? Uh, what 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 what? Well, one thing's for sure, you're always going to be online. Okay. Um, but that's. That's our focus for that game. It's not one of these share world games we get to follow, but it's sort of it's very much like your next big epic single player. Exactly. Yes. Game. Amazing. So, I mean, tell me for you and sort of you know, you look at your time, how you're sort of you know, you've got three studios now in BGS. I mean, where are you focusing your time right now? I tend to look. look we, first of all, we have a great team, yeah. and I've worked with a lot of these people. You know, the average time is over a decade, yeah. and they really know their stuff. So, oh please. Oh, please, a great team, and they really know their stuff. Then how come every one of these goddamn games have to be fixed by modders? Could someone explain that to me? How come even the vanilla Fallout 4 has frame rate issues, and I'm running a 1080 Ti? They really know their stuff. They really know how to break a game. It doesn't take me kind of digging in the weeds on everything. Yeah. I tend to spend my time up front when we're doing a game, you know, yeah. creatively, what is this going to be? And then as it's coming in, you know, Fallout 76. So basically Todd Howard comes in eating an apple and he spits balls ideas. Can we have a Fallout that's online with microtransactions similar to Fortnite so we could make a lot of money? These are great ideas, Todd Howard. Right now is, is dominating our studio's bandwidth because yeah. that's the game that's coming out and we have yeah. more people on that project than we've ever had on any project. Um, but then the mobile game, Blades, is, yeah. um, it's amazing. And that's an awesome team. Uh, most of them are in Montreal, but we do also do work in Rockville on that game. Yeah. And so Todd Howard then later on admits that Starfield is in production and Elder Scrolls is in pre-production. So they threw together a trailer just to wet your fucking nuts for no damn reason. So would you say, I mean, Starfield, Elder Scrolls 6, are they in production now? Um, I would say Elder Scrolls 6 is in pre-production okay. and Starfield is in Production. It's a game we've been making for a while. Well, okay, so you're, you're able to play Starfield now. Oh, yes, absolutely. Games. That's a good way to say it. Starfield is playable. Yeah. Um, Elder Scrolls 6, not, not in that way yet. Because they knew Fallout 76 wasn't going to be that well received. So you give the people, you know, a little trailer for the Elder Scrolls. Everybody's like, oh, thank God, the Elder Scrolls. Uh, I guess I can forgive Fallout 76. Now, when you were on the show a couple years ago, Elder Scrolls 6, you said that I think something along the lines, someone reminded me on Twitter last night, that the technology wasn't there yet for the game you wanted to build when you said this thing was two years ago on the show. Yes. Is the technology there now? Uh, it's getting closer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. This is mind-blowing. The technology wasn't there for Elder Scrolls 6 two years ago, but the technology is getting there now for Elder Scrolls 6. Dude, if that game is in the same fucking engine, and if there are broken animations, if that game launches in a typical Bethesda fashion, and this motherfucker has the balls to say the technology wasn't ready yet for his vision. Oh my, I'm just, I'm tilted by that. He's talking as if they're going to do something different. Bethesda hasn't done jack shit different in years. They've barely had ideas in years. If it wasn't for the modern community, 
you motherfuckers on the consoles wouldn't be enjoying your Bethesda games. You all modders, in my opinion. Because they come up with something Bethesda sees, oh, this is a popular mod. Let's put it in our next game. You're a genius, Todd. You're a genius. What about me? I'm Pete Hines. What is, I mean, what is your vision? I'm sure you don't want to say a lot about it, but I mean, what's the type of technology that you were looking to bring to life to be able to make I don't want to spoil anything yet. I think yeah. the teasers that we put out are, they're kind of A, announcing the game, and yeah. B, ones of tone. Yep. You know, how does the game feel? You know, hints at where it's set for both. The teasers you put out was a fucking landscape. It tells no one nothing. I could have gotten a drone and flown over the landscape of upstate New York, put the Elder Scrolls 6 thing over it with the goddamn Dova King music, and people would have gotten the same fucking vibes. Go fuck yourself. I forgot not to... Ugh. Of them, both Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six. Okay, well, Starfield, we know space. I guess seems like some kind of it space. Is space something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What? I mean, Elder Scrolls Six. I'm sure the fans have been tearing apart. Oh yeah, those two trailers really gave me tone of of what what, what it was gonna be. What the fuck is this? In Starfield, you look at a star base next to a goddamn planet. What the fuck's the tone? Star Trek: The Next Generation. Is that what you're telling me? Or is it Star Citizen? Is that what you're telling me? Or is it Elite Dangerous? What tone are you setting? Even the music, it feels like. I mean, there's there's a little bit of info there, right? I tell you, have a subtitle us, at some point. It will at some point. Yeah. Even for us, though, putting that, you know, redoing that music and putting yeah. it up there, even we get a, you know, we get goosebumpy. Yes. Like we can't wait, you know, to have everybody be able to play this game. But that's us too. We want to. I say that kind of creates like it's almost a, a a tone sort of rallying call for the team. I'm sure too, because it's like you know a thousand you percent, this, a thousand it's percent. Like, I mean, such a beautiful image. And again, not much more than that. But you see this. And you know what I think it is? The technology isn't there, which means consoles aren't there yet. Because I think Bethesda is just going to make really, really big worlds. Because that's what Bethesda does. They make areas bigger, and the missions are more sparse and sporadic. The characters are less interesting. The whole story suffers, but hey, it's a bigger world. There's more shit you could look at peppered through the goddamn landscape. There's some things there to pick apart, but we'll I, let our fans do that. I'm sure there's nothing there. <laughs> there's things our fans can pick apart. Yeah, so decrepit fucking kingdom or, or, or whatever the fuck, a fort. They go some mountains, they go some clouds. What am I supposed to get from this? It could be anywhere, except like elsewhere, because that's desert pretty much. I don't fucking care anymore. I don't even care to know the lore. The rewinds are already happening. All right, yeah. well, that's the future. We're you could pick my teeth and find more substance than that trailer. Really excited that you, and even for you, you know, this is, I'm sure, you know, the next number of years of your life, thinking of like all these games and all these projects. You know, as you get on, it's kind of- Jeff Keighley, I have to admit, he probably gives the best blowjobs. Because that man sure does know how to suck. He's gay! He's gay! He's gay! Did you hear the news? He's gay! I really? Someone wrote, This is a great interview, Jeff. Was really on point with those great questions. It's a good thing it wasn't me interviewing. Because they showed that trailer. And Todd Howard looked me in the eyes and said, our, There's a lot of stuff there. I've let our fans figure it out. I would have screamed, There's nothing there. And I would have taken my mic off and walked off camera. Kind of... You do it for a long time, and you think, well, what are all the games I want to make? Yeah. Well, let's just do it. You know, yeah. life is short. Um, so that's kind of been my attitude lately. Well, it, let's talk Fallout 76, because that is coming out this year. And uh, you gave uh, an amazing uh, presentation. You're such a master at sort of uh, Thank you. encapsulating all I learned all from this. you. Oh, stop. Please. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it was really special. And my god, that press conference was not really special. It was putting everyone in my chat while we watched it to sleep. Cut the shit, Jeff. Good God. Could his nose get any browner? And I wanted to, you know, a lot of people online had a lot of questions about the game. Just so people know, it's not it's not playable here at E3. It's so sort of what we saw is what we saw, right? Correct. Um, but a lot of people are kind of wondering, now, you know, the fact that you're doing this more of this sort of share world experience, and you said, hey, you can, you know, you can play solo, but a lot of people were asking me, it's like, can I play offline? You cannot. You will okay. see, even if you're playing... Oh, you can't play offline. You know what that means. The mods that you think you're going to get are only going to come on Creation Club. And guess what? Bethesda owns Creation Club. And 
you got to buy some creation points. By yourself doing quests, yep. you will see other players. Okay. Um, and you can interact with them, you can ignore them, because yep. there is a quest line. One of the main things that, that I saw feedback was when we say there, there are no NPCs. Okay. Okay, so that's one of the big differences that we really leaned on. There are no NPCs. Well, where the fuck do you get your quests? Which is every human, every character you see is a real person. Yeah. But there are still robots and terminals and holotapes. So if you see a lot of the quests we do in Fallout 4 that are kind of this fa- So basically you'll get your quests from terminals and holotapes. Sounds like a lot of fun. Great immersion. And all the people you see out there are actually people. So there's no NPCs. And I don't know how they figure this is going to work well. Have they not played online video games? Do you think someone's going to be cordial? Hey, I could use some help uh, getting this blah 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 from a death claw. No. I ain't Mark Twain because he did. No. I mean, they don't make you feel bad or hurl insults at you. Hey, fatty. Hey, fat ass. Hey, zit head. Hey, zit ass. Fatty, fatty, fag, acne, fag, your acne color, faggot. Right? They don't yell shit like that at you where, where all that's left for you to do is go buy a gun and shoot them in the face in a cafeteria. You know, and that's the clean version of what people will say to you on the internet. Found world yeah. quest thing, we still do all of that. Okay. But then, so if you sort of picture doing those quests or you watch someone play Fallout 4, it's like that. But then, as opposed to running into a gang of raiders, yeah. those are real players. So there's and, always, there's always PVP, like you can never, it's all... Well, we, first of all, I'd say we're still dialing that. Okay. We don't want it to be griefy, but we want to have some drama there. So how is that going to work if you're dialing it in? You run into a gang of raiders and they're all players, you're going to get raided. They're going to swarm you like the enemy team in Fortnite. Hold on, that damn dog. Okay. So there is a way that you can decide to do PVP, and uh -huh. we are currently balancing kind of the incentives for someone who wants to be uh, very aggressive to people yeah. and those who want to ignore it. Yeah. And that really comes down to, um, you know, the in game. Yeah, so it's like GTA 5. If you want to do a mission, you're going to have to go out of like, what is it, safety mode or alone mode? And then the second you do, someone's probably going to lay the hammer down on you. And frankly, this doesn't sound too interesting to me. It sounds nothing short of Bethesda's trying to catch up to Take Two Interactive with GTA 5 which is now the most successful franchise in history. It's outdone Star Wars. GTA 5 has made hand over fist money with their online mode. So Bethesda sitting here, already knew this for years. What we see here, Fallout 76, is actually leftover bits from Fallout 4 online. This is what we've got here. And they're hoping to Christ, they can capitalize on this and make as much money as GTA 5 has done with their online component and they're not even sure what they're going to do or how they're going to do it on top of that if you don't think it's about making money just remember the beta is closed to people who are willing to shell out $200 for the special edition version keep that in mind this is about making money plain and simple don't sit here and pretend Bethesda loves you don't pretend Bethesda cares don't think Zenimax gives a shit Todd Howard makes millions of dollars a year and he has controlling stock in Bethesda. Do you know how much more money he gets? Well, not controlling stock, but he has stock in the company. And it would benefit him and other shareholders to pump out some games as service game loaded with microtransactions, AKA creation club mods that they'll add later on. Okay, it is not gonna happen immediately. They're gonna figure out how they're going to get the marketing behind mods, specifically their own. I wouldn't be surprised if Bethesda turned around and came out and said, we are only supporting our curated mods and we're not going to have any support for third party mods because there's viruses and there could be cheap programs and people could do this and this to steal your information and we want to keep our player base safe and happy. And sometimes the mods use illegal assets from other games like Nintendo's Metroid. <laughs> They'll come up with something and the average fucking person will sit there and go, this is good. I'm glad they're cracking down on those mods for cheaters. Good. That'll teach them. Overclocking your CPU is a form of cheating. All those sex mods, these people are perverts. There's a lot of perverted sex mods out there that we need to get banned because it harms people. Mark my words. To, um, you know, the in-game incentives and then also the social incentives. But I would say we don't want it to be griefy in any way. Okay. 
and we'll dial it in so people can say, look, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. So you can pick. It's like I don't want, I don't want PVP. Well, you want a little bit of a, a little fear, I guess. It sounds we like. want a little bit of drama there yeah. without. But if there's no like NPCs in this game and you don't want it to be griefy and there'll be private servers, what would be the point of the game? Straight up, like what would be the point? To build some shelters? To run around and do some quests given to you by like a hollow tape or maybe like a robot? And then you wander around a barren world empty of anything other than monsters that randomly aggro you? The, um, without them ruining your game. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, a lot of people are wondering, you know, that's obviously uh, in an online sure. environment. How is that going to be accomplished? Still there. Okay, it's so real how does time. It, so it's real time back. Yeah. Okay. Um, not slowing time, really. It do, well, it doesn't slow it doesn't, time. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dollar says this real time bats is going to be hacked, and people are going to be popping headshots all day. Um, but it lets you target and pick okay. parts and and all of that. But it's in real time. It still works great. Yep. It's different, um, obviously, because it's real time. Yeah. But the basics of it, which are well, I can't really, I'm not that good of a twitch shooter. Yep. Um, you know, you see some other games. That's a good reference point. Yeah, I won't even mention it. People will dig into it too much. Right. But, but you can kind of picture how it works. Uh -huh. Like, I'm not as good at lining up someone and getting a headshot, right. but I've made my character good yeah. at VATS. Oh, and now I can do that. Okay. Um, do you see this as sort of, you know, a game as a service where there's going to be content, there's going to be end game raids? I mean, is it like, are, we, are you treating it like this where it's sort of going to continue to evolve over time? Absolutely. You know, yeah. with this, there's so much in it. That's the other thing. We well, they've confirmed that it will be games as service. I called it. What a surprise. We, yeah. we always do too much stuff. Uh -huh. And there's so much in this game that once we find out here's what the players like or here's what they're, they're missing and they yeah. want, since we've built a system, we're, our plan is to be adding into the game constantly tweaking it and have that, you know, long-term interaction with all of our fans. Now, the fans, I think, want to know about mods in an online environment, you know, sure. it's a huge part of, you know, your games over the years, BGS. How are you going to treat the idea of mods or user content in this environment? Um, we love mods, yeah. and so we are... Of course fucking Bethesda loves mods. If it wasn't for mods, their games would fucking be dead. I mean, really. Console gamers play a Bethesda game, they beat it once or twice, Maybe the really hardcore ones played a few more times than that. Quit squeaking, dog. And then that's it. Bethesda games have lived decades past their launch on PC. Mods have truly given Bethesda the ground on which they stand upon. And Bethesda now wants to make money off of said mods. And people will let them. And I'm sure there are some big modders who will sit there and get flown out to E3 and stuff like that. And talk about what a great experience it is. You stupid mutt. You're done.